Hey guys, I was watching videos last night. I was watching one of all the guns videos, and he had top 10 guns in 2010. I left the comment and also said I'd like to do a video like that. He said, Join the club, and he'd appreciate it if I did it. He'd like to see that, and maybe we could just, you know, go around the gun community. You don't have to have 10 guns, you have one gun. Doesn't matter, just show you, you know, what guns you got in the year 2010 and then maybe in 2011 we can go over uh, what we've got then, if anything's changed or something like that. I thought it was a great idea so I figured I'd keep the ball rolling by doing a little video on my own. I did a little twist on it though. What I did was my top 10 plus revolvers. I wanted to do revolvers first then I think I'm going to do my top 10 semi-automatics. Anyway, I'm going to start off with this Ruger Super Black Hawk. Gun's been cleared. And this is my Ruger Super Black Hawk and 44 Magnum, which means it can shoot 44 Magnum and it can shoot 44 Special. And 44 Special costs as much, if not more, than 44 Magnum, so most of the time I just shoot 44 Magnum. It also set up for scope rings which come with the gun so you could put a scope on here. A lot of people use these for hunting. I use it just for target shooting, shooting it, different things. It's just a fun gun to shoot. And the kick isn't really bad because it's a hefty little gun and it really handles the recoil well. And I put these grips on it. These are Hulk special grips. They're made of wood of course. And I thought it dressed up the gun. Which, when you fire it a lot, you can just put on your whole grips, your rubber grips on it. And uh, it's very accurate. And I really like the 44 Magnum Ram. Then I've got this one. It's Ruger Super Blackhawk. And this gun comes in 357. The cylinder in it is a 357 cylinder and it'll shoot 38 specials and it comes with an extra cylinder that shoots 9mm. This is a real fun gun to shoot. Really enjoy this. I have quite a few single action guns. I enjoy shooting them. Uh, they save on ammo because every time you shoot you've got to empty it by rotating the cylinder and ejecting the ram, so it's, it takes a little longer to load some rounds, so you don't go through them as fast. And they're just a fun gun to shoot. Brings back the memories of the old west and stuff. So it's just a nice gun to have. And then this is, I did a video, a separate video on this. Uh, Z Boy Co. has a great video out on this. If you get a chance, check out Z Boy Co.'s videos. He does a good video on this. Tells you all the specs and he shoots it a lot. It also is empty. This particular Ruger Single 6 is in stainless and I've got the fluted cylinder in there which the fluted cylinder is 22 so it could shoot 22's, 22 shorts, 22 long rifles and it comes with another cylinder that is non-fluted, in other words it doesn't have these indentations in there, it's just completely ran and that shoots 22 magnums so it's a pretty versatile gun 22 magnums are pretty expensive, They're, they cost right around the same price as a box of 9mm so unless you're shooting for something special I would just shoot the 22 long rifles in this and it's a fun gun to flank and again it's a great gun to teach a kid on. Great gun to teach a kid. I think I said that in my other video on it. So I got that. And we go to double action again. It's empty, clear. And this is a Ruger, I'm not Ruger, a Smith and Wesson. And I bought this used. And I only paid three hundred and fifty dollars for it, so I'm kind of proud of that. I I looked at real. It's got adjustable sides. 
I looked at and a guy wanted to sell this and it's he told me he never shot anything but 38 specials out of it. He used it as a target gun because it is an excellent target gun. I mean it is so accurate. If you go around YouTube, you look at the model 686, you will see a bunch of these. You will see a bunch of these on YouTube and there's a reason for it. Fred Hart has a video. Uh, there's several people out there right now that have videos on them and uh, you might want to check it out if you're interested in that type of gun. That's a nice one. Then there's another one I came across used because I like the old Model 29s. This is a Model 29. It's in nickel and uh, I wanted a blue but I this is the one I found, and again, it's clear, no rounds in there. It's the target hammer, target trigger, by that I mean they're wider. And this is a 20, a 29-2. Now, I don't know how many people mess with revolvers, but with a Smith & Wesson, they'll, when these first came out, they were Model 29s. You all remember the... Model 29, Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry guns. Well, they come out, when they come out with a model, they call it a Model 686, a Model 29, Model whatever. As improvements are made, they'll put a Model 29-1, Model 29-2, 29-3, and so on and so forth. That's what that number designates, is they made some difference in the gun. You'd have to go in, in on uh, Google it or find somebody that knows a lot about what they did to the certain gun but they might have just changed one little thing but they'll change that model number to a dash two dash three whatever it comes up to so every time they make an improvement that's what that means when you see somebody say this is a 29 dash two or a 29 dash three uh, that's what they're talking about it just means that Smith & Wesson from the original 29 they've made some kind of difference to it and here is a 629 now six six in uh, Smith & Wesson what the six designates is stainless steel so you got this is really this would be a model 29 but it's called 629 because it's made of stainless steel it's a 44 magnum and as you can see it's a lot smaller they come of course all different barrel lengths and this is quite a handful now your what I showed you before this is a 686 and the blued version is a 586 it's the 6 like I said designates stainless steel okay now this is one of my very favorite revolvers this is the model 19 this happens to be a model 19-3 and it also came uh, I know a lot of you guys that watch my channel have seen this. I made a separate video of it. And it is a Texas commemorative, Texas Rangers commemorative model. And it came in a box and a special knife. And it's just a, a real beauty. Now the Model 19, they made a lot of changes on this because a lot of people were squawking that it wouldn't handle a 357 round. And they've done some changes through the years on the metal and everything but I've owned the first Model 19's when they first came out many years ago and I shot some hand loads through there that would tear a regular gun up and I never had any problem any problems with these Model 19's so if you ever see one and it's used and you can get it for a decent price I highly recommend this gun it don't have to be a commemorative I've got another one of these that's just a regular Model 19 that I shoot regularly and it is one of my most accurate guns and I like the four inch barrel. Now we come to the snubbies. Okay. This is a Smith & Wesson model 36 and it has no dash after it. So this is just the plain one of the first model 36's that came out. I don't have any idea if they've got a 36-1, 36-2, but this is one of the first Model 36. It's 38 Special, 
and you can shoot plus P, 38 special plus P out of it. It's all steel. Beautiful gun, beautiful handgun. As with all the Smiths that I've ever handled, they have great actions. I mean, they just they're just superb and great trigger pulls, very light. But of course, this isn't a target gun. This would be a carry self-defense type gun, and uh, the police carried these private detectives for many, many years before the semi-automatics gained popularity. Now, again empty, and here you go with the Ruger LCP, and this thing is like picking up a tissue, it is so light, it's, when I first got this gun, I was afraid to shoot it, I'll be honest with you, I put 38 Special Plus P in it, and I to test it out, and I thought, boy, this thing's going to kick right out of my hands. But you would not believe. Again, you can go all over YouTube and check out people shooting this, and they all say the same thing. That this gun, it just, I don't know, it just fits the way they've made the gun. It just fits your hand so well that the recoil is hardly felt on it. It's, it's unbelievable. Beautiful, beautiful little revolver. I highly recommend this. For anybody that's into revolvers, very nice made gun, very light, and it can take plus P. So, check that out if you're looking for a revolver. There, empty. This is Ruger SP-101, hammerless for concealed carry, so it doesn't snag on anything. The sights, they're non-adjustable, of course, they're just fixed sights right carved right out of the metal there so they have no snag points or anything and it holds five rounds 357 magnum and again it will shoot 38 special 38 special plus P and another great gun this one happens to be in stainless and beautiful little gun here I like it it's hefty though now this is one of my babies I had one of these many years ago in nickel and I always wanted to get another one and I've been looking around for them and I didn't see them and finally found one and this one is like it's never been shot. It is excellent. It's a Colt Detective Special. Holds six rounds of 38 Special and people will tell you that it won't handle uh, 38 Special plus P but it will Colt recommends that you do not go over 10,000 rounds of 38 Special Plus P without getting the timing checked. And the timing is just making sure that your cylinder aligns up with your barrel here so you don't have bullet shaving. So all you have to do is check it. The gun will handle it. That's no problem there. It will handle it. I don't think most people are going to shoot 10,000 out of a snub nose. Because uh, you know, you know, this is going to be again a self-defense gun. But anyway, that's another baby of mine. I really love this gun, and you can get them for around four hundred dollars in this kind of shape. So it's not a bad buy. Now, my last gun that I want to show you in the revolvers is this, the Pug, NAA Pug, and uh, this is really a nice little Derringer. Again, you can go around on YouTube and see a lot of videos on this. I did one. It's out there. And it's just a beautiful little gun. And it really hand When you put this handle on this grip, it really feels good in your hand. I mean, it just feels like a bigger gun. And you can throw this in your shorts in the summertime. And it carries 22 Magnum. And that's a pretty stout round. You won't feel naked with carrying this, I guarantee you. So anyway, just want to make a quick video, show you a few of my revolvers. And uh, any of you guys got some revolvers or, or any kind of handguns and you want to do video on that, that would be great. Just show what you got in 2010 and maybe something will change by 2011. Thanks for watching, guys.